Thanks. Um, as an insurance policy, in case my demo doesn't work today, I brought it out last night. I was working it all today. So there are some people who actually did see it work. Uh, so let's see if the demo gods are nice to me. So everybody loves robots, right? Yeah. Ow! Uh, Jason Huggins, uh, co-creator of the Selenium Project uh, and co-founder, CTO of Sauce Labs. You should follow me on Twitter. All right. So this is uh, for the next three slides and only the next or two or three slides is a repeat after me thing. So everybody, get your vocal cords warmed up. Repeat after me. Testing. Testing. Let's try that again. Testing, Testing. Is, is not cool. Not cool. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'll, I won't, I'll just let you do it. You don't really believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. Anyway, you're wrong, by the way. You can stop repeating. So here is a nice little um, philosophy thought process here. Robots are cool. Robots can test. Therefore, testing with robots is cool. Ta-da. So um, this project really is, I've been in this whole testing thing. I'm kind of, you know, started as a developer fell into software testing uh, by accident. It's actually a really interesting intellectual problem for me. Um, and I think um, if you don't care about testing, it means you don't have an app with any users or that makes any money, right? Um, which sounds like an insult, but actually if you're like a stealth startup, it's more important to, you know, if you're two guys in a garage, two girls in a garage, the more important thing is to ship anything, something that's relevant, that people care about. And so at the very beginning, yeah, testing is actually not important. But once you do have users, once you do have revenue, what it comes down to is once you're at 3 a.m. and you get a page that something's broken, um, you're going to want to fix that problem and then want to start doing testing so you never have to do that again. Of course, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, harder than that, but testing, it, testing is important. Anyway, so today, uh, the, the, the thing I've been doing all these last years is doing all the software stuff, and this project, um, I call it, um, it's made out of this building material called Bitbeam, so the, kind of the home for this project is called bitbeam.org. And uh, I'm really kind of taking the software out of uh, the computer and, and making a test in real life. So it's kind of like, if you remember Tron, the movie, you know, he falls into the computer, this is kind of like the reverse Tron. I'm taking the, the, the Selenium, the software robot, out, uh, out into the real world. Uh, so let me tell you uh, kind of briefly a little bit about like where this story came from, or where this where this kind of crazy thing came from. Uh, so a, a long time ago, uh, Sony came out with this thing called the robot dog, um, and I've actually always been interested in robots ever since I was a kid. And then in the late '90s, Sony came out with this thing. It's like, oh my gosh, the robot revolution is on, which is also weird. Robot revolution is also on now. It seems like it kind of goes in waves. Like every 10 years, there's like a new um, revolution. Anyway, back then, robot dogs. Um, so I had this idea to, um, you know, long story, but um, I was going to do robot fish, right? Why not, right? Um, and uh, so I started doing 3D simulations of how uh, fish swam. I bought books, I went to aquariums, and I learned this crazy thing that fish swim in a sine wave. Um, if you kind of look at it, uh, especially like an eel, it's, it's very much a perfect sine wave thing. So I started doing 3D simulations, and... Um, on the software, not on this thing, but I, but I had this thing called pin art. I, I, I hope everyone's kind of seen this. Not everyone knows that it's called pin art, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. I, I had this kind of, uh, this thing was sitting on my desk, and yet I was doing 3D simulation of f swimming fish and sine waves and stuff like that on my desktop, and I thought, wow, it's ironic. I really want to see this 3D animation, but it's trapped on this 2D piece of glass. So this is kind of, um, you know, uh, not talking about software robots, but this is just kind of like this art project hobby thing that I've, I've had going for a while. This motorized pen art idea is something I'm still uh, want to have exist in the world. Um, so I started, again, just this hobby, not related to testing, not day job related thing. I didn't know what to call my motorized pen art thing, so I called it pin thing. And um, I've got a demo here. The cool thing about this, I guess, in the room, I, don't, I haven't met Mr. Doob yet. Um, is he here or is he around? Anyway, but this is 3.js on, on the software, and then uh, I'm using the, uh, Rem, Remy's um, console. And so the idea for this little art project is to, you know, if I want an you know, array of pins, I can do all kinds of animations, but to kind of start simple, um, I think maybe if I get four of these, I could do a clock. And, you know, the whole point of really this project is, like, I want to get into uh, 
you know, robotics and mechanics and all kinds of fun stuff. But again, still not related to testing, not related to anything JJAR related, but this pin thing I want to exist. And while I was still working on this project, actually I'll switch forward, I was prototyping in Lego. I have to figure out what the actuator is for each one of those pins. Um, and I did a, a first version in Lego, and then I realized, okay, now that I have it working, here's the, the, the clicker, the linear actuator. Uh, but if I scale this out to thousands of pins, wow, this is going to be um, really, really expensive. Um, so then I, um, so I could kind of put the project on hold for a little bit. I then went to a maker fair and discovered um, this project called Gridbeam. This is for ma making for like standing desks and tables and beds and all kinds of crazy things. This is one of the co-inventors, Richard Jurgensen. He lives in Northern California. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a standing desk. I mean, kicking in the shins, like yeah, they should, this is a really cool building material. It's like um, life-size Lego erector set kind of stuff. Anyway, so um, I, I knew of this project, and so like, wait a second, Lego's cool, I like the geometry, but it's expensive, so I had this crazy idea to like combine Lego, the geometry of it, with Gridbeam, basically report Lego geometry to different, you know, cheaper materials, and now I've got this thing. Again, this thing is meant to be vertically, vertically aligned for my pin thing project, but then as I was walking around the house with this, um, and, uh, you know, I actually, you know, held it upside down and kind of noticed actually, you know, it could be a pin simulation thing, but uh, it also is kind of like a glorified button clicker, you know, and realizing that's kind of what Selenium, that's what testing really is. That's actually what makes testing uncool, is people that you pay probably um, offshore somewhere and just, they're just paid to click buttons all day. And I was like, wait a second, this, this potentially could be a button clicker. And this is where it became not so much a, an art project, but potentially related to the day job. Um, so I designed this, uh, this robot, basically, the first version of it, um, around uh, around this clicker. And so now I have got, the, this is actually generation two, you see over here, Bitbeam bots. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, testing, you know, Selenium and uh, the apps that I tested originally, you know, time expense apps, very boring, makes for a very boring demo. But so uh, trying to go for the most ridiculous thing I could think of. Uh, and I was like, well, if I can make it play Angry Birds, it can do anything, right? Uh, so that, that, was, that was the mission, make this robot clicker thing play Angry Birds. Um, and so there's, there's kind of the thing I've realized in building kind of robots, there's really kind of like a triathlon of things. Um, you need the electronics, um, the mechanics, and the software. Most of the stuff, I think, in this room, we're mostly really geeking out on the Arduino and, and the, the software side. Uh, so the demo I have, uh, thanks to Chris Williams, uh, the Johnny Five and Fermata, you know, uh, upskilled my software um, with the latest Node stuff. But the thing that, struggled, that I struggled with the most is um, all of our robots need skeletons. So like the node copter stuff is cool, but that's kind of an off the shelf proprietary thing. And so for me, to I want to do robots, I want it to be a completely open source stack all the way down. So the mechanics was the thing I really stumbled, I stumbled on, but now that I've created basically an open source Lego, uh, I now can do the software, the electronics, and the mechanics all open source. So the, I guess the, the way I call the Bitbeam project, it's uh, you know Linux is to Microsoft as Bitbeam is to Lego. Um, my only problem though is no one hates Lego. Uh, I, I, I picked a really bad enemy there. Um, but they do sue people, they do have patents, thankfully most of them, all of them I hope, uh, most of them have expired. Um, so uh, I, I mean it is public domain, they're expired, uh, expired patents at least, so I can kind of, uh, they, they might sue me anyway, but we'll, we'll see. Um, you know, so th there's this idea of this, this um, again, I've said this before, but you know, Selenium and starting from that is a software-based robot. It's really just a glorified button clicker. You know, so you know, could could we make a robot that does that does the same thing? So long, um, a dream for this then is to have the Selenium API where, and I, I don't have that today, but you know, at some point uh, you can say, you know, I want to drive Firefox, I want to drive Chrome, um, Safari, or I want to drive an iPad in a robot. And as far as you're concerned, the API is the same. So I'm still driving towards that vision. Right now, it's, there's kind of low-level APIs. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's switch to a demo. So I'm using uh, Photo Booth. The, it's inverted the, uh, the screen here. So uh, let's get my Windows all set up. So the first thing that you want to do when you want to uh, have a robot that plays like Angry Birds, you need to select the app, right? Right. So <laughs> I'm in the app, and I'll and now I will uh, get to the uh, the front here. 
Right, yes. So uh, one of the things, this, this generation two of this robot, this is actually called a, a Delta robot. You could perhaps see it here. If I can kind of, uh, actually I'll do a little tour of the, of the, uh, the robot here. Um, there's three arms, that's why it's called a Delta. It was invented, I, I can't, I forgot his name, but it's actually a, a Swiss engineer um, in the 80s. And no joke, he, um, he designed you know, the dis Delta robot design to, um, uh, from Switzerland, of course. It was uh, conveyor belts of chocolates uh, coming off the conveyor belt, and they're trying to get chocolates into packages. Um, and they were noticing that everything was automated except that last part where the chocolates were being uh, picked up by humans and putting in boxes, like, oh, could we do that? Um, so they needed, as the conveyor belt was going pretty fast, they needed a very fast robot design. So as I was embarking on this video game robot thing, it needs to be fast, someone saw my first version of it, so like, ah, it's really slow, you should check out a Delta robot. Thankfully, the patent has expired, so hey, I can, I'm legally allowed to, uh, to build a Delta. So anyway, there's this thing, so yeah, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of creepy cool, right? Um, yeah, so I'll keep going on with the demo here. Now, for the, uh, the big point, actually, hybrid manual testing, right? Okay, so uh, I have to get into position. I wonder if this actually works. Oh, yeah, sure. Famous last words. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Okay, now once is just luck, right? So uh, let's see if I can do it again. Once I'm lucky, too, I'm good, right? Let's see, can I improve my score? I think that was what, one star. How many how many stars do you think it is? One, two. I think that was one. If you hit that, if you hit right at that corner, you get three. Oh, only one star. Okay, so I've got I've got a uh, room for improvement, right? Um, <laughs> so so let me actually show you a little bit. Um, actually, one of the things that I just got working today. There's this really um, robotics is ultimately very simple, but they use if you. Um, study robotics classes, uh, they use all these big words, um, so you can sound very smart at a cocktail party, but it, it's very simple stuff. One thing is to tell a robot to go to a point, it's very simple, like you don't even have to think about it as a human, you're just like, oh, I wanna pick up the glass, boom. Um, that is a, f that fancy phrase in robotics is called inverse kinematics. And um, I have a, an inverse kinematics library I'll, I'll put on GitHub after the talk. And there's really kind of, there's two things in robotic lands. There's inverse kinematics, basically saying like, there's an X, Y, Z point in the universe, I wanna get to it. And so what you have to do is like, your robot doesn't know about anything about geometry in the world, but it knows that it's got a motor that can go 180 degrees, and this motor can go this. And so what you have to do, the inverse kinematics is to, is to say, given an X, Y, Z point in the universe, what are the angles for all of the, um, the motors to get to that location? Um, so I've, I've had this robot actually for you know, a couple months now, but I've had a very low level API. Now granted, you know, all these go commands, that's very low level, but it's higher than it was a couple hours ago. Uh, what I can do then is just give it a particular location and then it figures out this very fancy algorithm, um, uh, translates that to what the servers need to go to. So if I can, get, I can do some simple things now. Uh, and again, it's X, Y, Z. So X, so the origin is in the sensor and Let's see, negative tw 120, that's in the z-axis. And I can kind of go there. And if I want to go down, I can kind of keep doing that. The, the surface of the tablet's right around 150. Um, so I'll just keep it, to keep it safe. There's that. So you can kind of see the input, go, is x, y, z, and the output is going to be the angles that the servos need to be. So when it's on the origin, they're effectively all the same. But if I go, you know, off in, in Cartesian, on a Cartesian adventure, that's negative 50x, and that's plus 50x. Or I can do, that's y, and then negative y. So now I have like anywhere in the x, y, z plane, I've got, I've got the, um, the, I've got the power, right? Um, also because of uh, the kinematics, the, 
calculating forward. It's a little bit opposite of what I would think it would be, but so you got inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics means I am here. Tell me what the position of my servos or what my angles are. So um, I could do the in, uh, ca the forward kinematics, and I'll just say it's what one point five. 41, 41. That was roughly the um, the output from the last function, and it should inverse it. Um, yeah, roughly 0, 50, negative 20. Anyway, <laughs> rounding errors, right? But so you can go forward and back. Uh, for me, I needed um, it was really important to have the X, Y, Z um, thing. So so future steps for this project, um, if you kind of notice, some people are saying like, well, how do I know where to tell this robot? This is a, another thing in robot lands. This is an open loop, right? Which means I'm telling it to go somewhere and it really doesn't know um, anything. It's not very smart. Um, there is no feedback mechanism from the robot to uh, back to the computer to say like, oh, you told me to go here, but I'm actually here and let's course correct to get to the right spot. Um, so one of the things I'm also working on is then using uh, Peter Braden's uh, OpenCV bindings for Node. And uh, that's where things get really cool. With an iPad uh, 2 and up, and, uh, and the iPhone 4S and up, you can get a VGA adapter and get a, mirror, get a video signal out of, of the iPad. Um, once I have that, I actually use a device called um, prosaically named VGA to USB, right? So it takes the VGA signal, and then I plug it into my laptop. So now I actually can grab like JPEG frames of, of, this, of the iPad screen. Once I have that, I can use OpenCV, and I have a little thumbnail picture where I can find the bird on that screen. Open computer vision algorithms can, can translate this bird to a particular XYZ coordinate on the screen. Once I have that XYZ coordinate, I can then feed it into this inverse kinematics function and then, and then uh, go. So the other dream for this is I can sit back and then watch it completely you know, play by itself. And then on top of that, then once we have a robot that's kind of sort of autonomous and course correcting, we can then um, start having competitions about Angry Birds playing robot you know, uh, efficiency and you know, find the pig, find the bird, figure out the angle, you know, how far to throw. So I, I, f I envision um, Angry Birds robot contests in the future, like as, uh, make it as ridiculous as possible. Um, but yeah, th th there, there's lots of things. Um, there's lots of things that we can do with this. Um, and one thing I think after, after my talk, I'm going to go back, uh, back to the coffee uh, spot. But um, I, need to, I need to help. I need, you my, I need your help um, implementing um, the, the tweet function. Um, so uh, I want, you know, by the end of the today, uh, get this robot to just uh, you know, say hello, uh, JSConf. And then the key thing is uh, send for my robot. Um, so that's, that, yeah, that, that's coming, uh, coming very soon. But, um, yeah, anyway, so, so the, the, the inverse kinematics and all that, all this robot stuff, it, there are some really good classes um, at Stanford. They put them all on, on, online, U, iTunes University. And um, I thought I was really interested in robotics, you know, like a long time ago, but it, because I didn't have a project to do something, it was very dry, very boring material. And I think this is one of those lessons learned of college because I didn't have a project to work on. I, I couldn't even I couldn't survive the first class, but now I now I need these functions. I now I now get it. But don't get scared by the science and the vocabulary. Just realize a lot of this stuff is very simple. I mean, robots are ridiculously stupid. Even at this level, they're not very smart. And so the things that we're trying them to do to get them to do, um, it's it's just geometry. Um, and and thankfully, lots of other people you can kind of uh, grab people's algorithms and uh, run them in your stuff and, and get get them to work. But uh, so at, at this point, actually, I think I would like to open it to questions. Yeah, thanks. There. Yeah. Oh, holy cow, I forgot. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Chris Williams actually implemented this last night, the dancing robots. Um, and then, uh, let's see, if you want to like take a break and chill, right? That's a stop. What was that, dance? Oh, oh shoot, right.
can't see it. There you go. Thank you. Let's try that again. <laughs> so uh, Chris also, um, uh, he, he got the, uh, the, the Wii controller. We got it uh, working so we actually can kind of play the video game, you know, abstracted through, uh, through all this. So you can show the, see the demo later. Any, any other questions? What was that? For the, wow, microphone. Is the code for this, I just went to the get the Bitbeam repo, but that's for the hardware. Yeah, for this demo right now, I'll put that up right after okay, the talk. Cool, thank you. Right. I want to see it badly. It's Johnny Five stuff? Johnny Five, right. It's, yay, okay. Thanks. Johnny Five is the um, robot, is the node library, and then Fermata is on the Arduino side. Yeah. Um, how much does this thing cost approximately? Oh, right. Um, so it's a lot cheaper than if you're going to do it in Lego. And also the other thing is um, Lego doesn't make parts um, like this long. Uh, so it's actually about $100. Um, and most of it actually is the Arduino. The Arduino and the, and the prototyping board, that's like 30 or 40. The servos each are um, 10 apiece. So um, just in electronics, actually two thirds of the cost is just the electronics. Um, the wood and the bolts are probably like maybe 10, $15 or so. And that little iPad stylus, I overpaid and got it at Best Buy or something like that. I could, I could make my own uh, dirt cheap. Um, and there's actually one, um, I, I did put this, uh, project up on, uh, there's a website called Tindy, T-I-N-D-I-E dot com. Um, it's kind of like an electronics uh, version of Etsy, uh, where you can kind of put your project up there. Um, now granted, it's it's for sale, but I, I don't want you to buy it. <laughs> uh, because I'm really, um, it's a manual process to make this, right? So what I need to do next is to make the robots that can make this robot. So I need a conveyor belt, and I need more um, bit beams that can, I can shake the bolts onto the conveyor belt. I can find the bolts, put them in a kit. So I haven't done that yet, so, um, so that's there. But yeah, so the, 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 you know, the plans are out there. I've documented it, like a whole Flickr set for all of the construction um, steps for this. And uh, yeah, it's about $100. I, I laser cut the wood at uh, Tech Shop San Francisco so if you have if you have access to an epilogue laser cutter, you can kind of you know buy the wood at a. Um, you know, this is actually just a two foot length of ba a basswood for like ninety nine cents, um, and learn how to laser cut, and uh, and do it. The the thing though, I think that laser cutting is also too too manual, too labor intensive. Um, the better idea is to download the uh, the Bitbeam file from Thingiverse. Um, so. I, uh, the cool thing about open source and the thing, uh, Thingiverse, all these things, um, I uploaded the, the, the 2D DXF laser cut files, and within an hour of being on Thingiverse, uh, someone uploaded the, the, the 3D version that can, is RepRap printable. Um, and so this, was, this is ABS plastic, the same as Lego. And um, uh, anyway, it's pretty cool. So I, I think actually the, the best way to, if you're going to make your own, is you know, get the electronics from wherever, the Arduino and the servos, that's kind of been known how to do that, spark fun or something. Uh, but I would recommend getting a 3D printer, getting the Bitbeam files, and then just uh, printing a bunch of them. So that, yeah, the, the dream I think is, you know, besides robots that actually can, you know, be the equivalent of Selenium, and, and test all your software. The other one is kind of imagine a toy company that, uh, you know, is kind of like a modern company. Instead of a factory in some country where I make stuff for you, and send it to you for a ridiculously high price. Um, imagine there are just 3D printers everywhere, and so there's you know, building up a community of people to putting kits up on the website, and then that has the instructions on how you can print it, and so you can send an entire, you know, uh, bill of materials to your printer, and just say, you know, in the morning, you now have your own kind of Lego kit, um, and you didn't have to, uh, you know, wait for shipping and handling for that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that, that, that's kind of the dream. So you can make it yourself, um, or at some point, once I have the whole robot assembly line, uh, um, I'll get it to you. So can you tell us um, about controlling that with like a Wii controller maybe lady, later? Or, or the, the Wii controller? Yeah, because that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'll probably go into, I'll go into that. Uh, I'll go into, yeah, I'll let, follow, find me maybe afterwards. Maybe just after, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. All right, thanks.